Hello everyone. Now we'll discuss design, develop and implement C or C++ Java program to stimulate the working of shortest remaining time and round robin scheduling algorithms. Experiment with different quantum sizes for RR algorithm. First we'll see shortest remaining time first. In short you can call it as SRTF. So shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm is nothing but the preemptive shortest job first algorithm and this algorithm is one of the process scheduling algorithm wherein the process with the least burst time will be scheduled for its execution okay so based on this uh, principle we'll see uh, how this algorithm works for a set of processes. Now let us consider processes P1, P2, P3, P4 and uh, uh, its arrival time as 0, 1, 2, 3 respectively and also consider the burst time given for these processes. That is 8. So this is 8, 4 and for process P3 it is 9 and for the process P4 it is 5. Okay. For the, so this is only the given let us consider this is the initial data given okay and on this process on these processes will apply short uh, preemptive uh, shortest job first okay so now the question is uh, what is preemptive so the preemptive is nothing but uh, it is the ability of the operating system to preempt a currently scheduled task or the process okay so we'll see how this algorithm works first we'll draw the gantt chart so as of now you just consider only these three columns process arrival time and the burst time now gantt chart so here we can see uh, process 1 arrives at 0 okay and its its burst time is 8 initial it is 8 okay so since it arrives first uh, that means when t is equal to 0 this uh, process enters the ready queue so it this process will be assigned for the execution that is p is equal to uh, that is p1 okay and let's increment the time this happens when t is equal to 0 now we'll increment the time that is t is equal to 1 when t becomes 1 that means arrival time becomes 1 then process 2 enters the ready queue okay now will compare the burst time of p1 and p2 uh, when we compare this uh, p2 has the least burst time right so that's why we will preempt the p, uh, p1 process uh, from the execution and assign p2 for its uh, execution okay next uh, increment t is equal to 2 when t is equal to 2 we can see here p3 enters ready queue and its burst time is 9 okay so now compare the burst time of this and this obviously p2 has least burst time right so allow p2 uh, for to continue its execution now increment the time when t is equal to 3 p4 enters the ready queue and its burst time is 5 now compare the burst time of 4, nine, uh, four and 5 obviously p2 has least burst time so p2 is allowed to complete its execution so 4 plus 1 it is 5 see here p1 we preempted when t becomes 1 right so it p1 executed one unit of time out of 8 that's why i have subtracted 1 from 8 and which is equal to 7 so the burst time left for p1 is 7 okay now p2 completed its execution in the ready queue now compare the burst time of p1 p3 and p5 out of these three p4 has least one so assign its for, uh, assign this process for execution and its burst time is 5 so add this 5 to 5 that becomes 10 okay now p, p4 completed now, now compare the burst time of p1 and p3 the least burst time uh, is 7 so assign uh, p1 for its execution and add 7 to 10 now 10 plus 7 is 17 
so the last process left out is p3 and that is assigned for its execution and it executes for 9 units of time 17 plus 9 is 26 okay this is the gang chart so once we have this we can find out uh, at what time each process completes its execution and waiting time of each process and also turnaround time of each process can be calculated okay and at the end we are going to calculate what is average waiting time and turnaround time for this srtf algorithm so finish time p1 completes its execution 20 is equal to 70 so i have written the 17 here and next p2 completes its execution at 5 so 5 is written p3 completes its execution when t is equal to 26 that is written and p4 completes its execution at 10 so that's why it's written now we'll uh, find out what is waiting time of each process because at the end we have to find out what is average time and what is turnaround time so waiting time for each process can be calculated by following the formula finish time minus arrival time minus burst time so applying this we'll get waiting time for all the process okay and uh, add all this it comes to 26 next find out what is turnaround time for each process turnaround time can be calculated waiting time uh, waiting time plus burst time okay so when we add that we'll get burst uh, uh, turnaround time for all the process add it up okay and at the last find out what is average time and uh, what is average turnaround time so 26 uh, waiting time when you add up here it comes 26 and divided by number of process that is 4 here so that comes to 6.5 milliseconds and turnaround time 52 divided by 4 that comes to 13 milliseconds okay so with this idea we'll see the coding part before moving to coding part uh, we'll see the design part of it okay so as i said shortest remaining time first algorithm is nothing but preemptive sjf scheduling okay first what we'll consider will traverse until all the process gets completely executed that means we'll go through the uh, we'll go through all the process given in the uh, data okay and then uh, as per shortest job first we have to find the process with the minimum remaining time which is nothing but the burst time okay uh, find process with minimum remaining time at every single time lap okay then once we have the process with the least burst time reduce its time by one and then check if it is and reduce by one next check if its remaining bur uh, remaining time becomes zero I mean if its burst time is zero that we have to check then increment the counter of the process completion so once the process completes its execution that means the process which has least burst time completes its execution uh, will increment uh, uh, the counter that is maintained for the process completion then completion time of current process is equal to current time plus one okay and then calculate waiting time for each completed process by following this formula once you have this increment time lag by one okay and next once we have the uh, waiting time then we can find out turnaround time that is waiting time plus burst time okay by following this design we'll see how i will see about the code now okay see you can see here this is the coding part uh, for a shortest remaining time first and uh, i'm following java to implement this okay here the class process is created for which process id burst time and the arrival time is uh, considered okay and for this constructor is used and this pointer is also used uh, which points to the current object and this is a process id and burst time and then the arrival time okay now we'll move to the main program so main function where the process with its arrival time uh, pro i mean process id 
burst time and arrival time is given and in this uh, pro problem we have considered four processes and respective burst time and arrival time is also mentioned okay next we call the function find average time where the processes and its length is passed as arguments okay when this function is called it goes to the particular function where Here. Okay. Uh, find average time function is uh, considered here where the declared variables are de uh, written total wait waiting time and total turnaround time we have to find out so in this function we'll write two more function where we are finding waiting time of each process and turnaround time of each process okay when waiting time uh, function is called then we'll go to the particular function that is find waiting so here the class stf okay here waiting time function is written okay where the process and number of process and waiting time are passed as arguments okay and here we use we are copying the burst time of each process to another array that is rt of I, rti rt of i that means remaining uh, time that means burst time because as and when the process uh, starts its execution uh, its uh, burst time we have to reduce it right that's why uh, we are changing we are assigning the actual burst time to another array that is remaining time okay then complete variable is used where uh, it is uh, this is used to keep track uh, when a particular process is completed its execution okay and minimum variable that is assigned to some uh, value that is available in the java and integer ma dot max underscore value is nothing but 2 power of 31 minus 1 and it is assigned to some value that's why it is considered to max value and t is equal to 0 to keep track of the time and sh shortest is used that is for the uh, to find the process which has the short burst time and finish time and one more variable is used of type boolean that is check so initially check is assigned to false uh, that means uh, the particular process has not completed its execution if this is assigned to true that means a process completed its execution so next we will consider the uh, while loop where the complete variable is used if a while complete is not equal to n so this uh, condition is used uh, to process I mean to consider process until all the processes gets completed okay so next step is find process with the minimum remaining time among the process that arrives till the current time so we have to find uh, the process with the minimum burst time okay so to do that loop is used for loop I mean to find out for all the pro now we, first we have to find out uh, process with the minimum burst time right so to check that we have written if condition here arrival time of the process if it is lesser than or equal to zero and uh, remaining burst time is lesser than minimum and remo uh, remaining burst time if it is greater than zero if this condition holds good we we have then we'll have the minimum uh, the process with the minimum burst time okay and that particular process is assigned to shortest and a uh, check variable is set to true okay so this is done to find out the process with the minimum burst time next thing if in case if check is equal to false then increment the time and continue and next is once we have the process with the minimum burst time we have to reduce its uh, uh, remaining burst time right so that is done by using 
R T of shortest minus minus. Okay. After reducing, update the minimum. Now uh, min min m uh, variable will be assigned with the process which has the least burst time. That is R T of shortest. If minimum is equal to zero, then assign uh, min m is equal to max value. Okay. That we considered in the uh, previous page. So if process uh, gets completely executed, then then uh, we have to check whether its remaining burst time is zero, right? That's why if is equal to R T of shortest is equal to zero. If this is zero, increment complete variable. That means we are moving to the next process. Then find finish time of the current process. That can be calculated. Finish time is equal to T plus one. Then find out waiting time. Waiting time uh, formula as we discussed. Finish time minus Uh, uh, burst time of the shortest process. Uh, I mean, proc of shortest dot burst, burst time minus arrival time. So if uh, wait of short, I mean waiting time of the uh, process with the shortest burst time, if it is lesser than zero, then assign it to zero. Okay. Once this uh, this is completed, increment the time. So this way. Checked for all the process which has the least burst time and uh, assign it for the execution and will calculate the finish time as well. Okay. Next comes the turnaround time. Okay. In turnaround time, we are going to calculate turnaround time for all the process that can be calculated by adding burst time plus waiting time and assign it to uh, a vari variable called TAT. Okay. Once we have this, next thing is we have we can calculate average time. Average waiting time as well as average turnaround time. That here. So in this, uh, we'll display process along with all the details like process, its burst time, waiting time, and turnaround time. Okay. And next, we have to find out what is total waiting time and total turnaround time. That can be calculated by adding. Uh, total waiting time plus waiting time of all the process and uh, total turnaround time plus total turnaround time of all the process that will give you total waiting time and turnaround time and that is printed here. Once we have this, we have to find out average waiting time, right? That is calculated your total waiting time divided by n. N is nothing but number of process, and for the turnaround time, it is. Total turnaround time divided by number of process. This will give you average waiting time and average turnaround time. So that completes SRTF algorithm.